And a good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My name is Jeff Owens, director at WEIU. My co-host is Mr. Corbin Cox. Welcome, Corbin. Hi. And today we're going to be talking to people from the Mattoon in Motion. Um, Alex Benishek, I'm just going to let you give your name title and scoot up that microphone and, and give us your t title. Yeah, okay, yeah. So Alex Benishek. Yeah. Uh, Alex Benishek here. And, uh, yeah, I am the board president of Mattoon in Motion, and I'm also the community development and planning director for the city of Mattoon. All right. Carolyn, everybody knows you, but we'll have you introduce yourself today as well. So, Carolyn Cloyd, I work for the Mattoon Chamber of Commerce, and I'm also on the Housing Committee for Mattoon in Motion. And one of the things that we have you in today for is really, I don't want to call it a housing crisis, but there's a housing issue in Mattoon in the area that maybe people aren't so well aware of, and you want to talk about that today, Alex, and kind of go through some of the, the uh, you know, the whys and wherefores. So why don't we talk a little bit about the, the issue and go from there? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, in Mattoon, uh, I think it's really important for us to look at data to see where we are in comparison to other places and you know what our general landscape looks like, right? So in Mattoon, right now, most people might be surprised to find out that 31.6% of our housing was built before 1939, right? And with only 1.5% being built since 2010. Uh, and, you know, we have about 8,012 active housing units in our community with about 884 potentially vacant, abandoned, or deteriorating uh, you know, homes in our community. And we call those VAD properties, that's the acronym. Uh, and so, you know, looking at that initially, I'm sure some folks are like, oh no, like we have 884 vacant and abandoned homes. Like, isn't that bad, right? That's actually pretty average uh, okay. for most places. So like, I got some stats here. Um, where, you know, in uh, the United States, 10.3% of our housing is vacant like that. In Mattoon, it's 9.9%. So it's a little bit better there. Um, and so essentially, uh, you know, 884 houses, when I hear that number, I, I get really excited because that's a lot of opportunity that we have if we can figure out where these places are and how to address them. That number comes from the uh, U.S. Census. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So what are you doing or are we doing uh, to really kind of compound this problem we have? Yeah, well, I, I think it'd be helpful to maybe talk with Carolyn real quick about, you know, Matt Tune in Motion and how the committee that we have our housing action team first formed uh, to kind of bring us up to where okay. we are now, yeah. sort of. Carolyn, we do that? Well, and if I can put a little bit of a human, human uh, nature on that. Uh, <laughs> Um, all those stats, what that means is people are coming here, some of our larger employers are trying to bring people to town and they can't find housing. Alex and Ed Dowd and I were on the move to Mattoon committee trying to move some uh, remote workers and, and they had trouble finding housing. So what we're doing on the housing committee is just looking at various ways that we can make um, either it easier for contractors to build housing or what we can do with the old stock, as Alex mentioned, you know, looking at things like TIF, new TIF districts. We're looking at, you know, how to, uh, um, you know, bring in contractors to do, not bring them in, but, you know, get them, make it where it's viable for them to put in subdivisions, yeah. you know, multi, multi family housing everything we're looking at everything isn't it isn't it safe to say we're looking at everything yeah absolutely <laughs> uh, and, and you know just like in the past you know our, our committee had really focused on uh, you know uh, like smaller rehabs things like that and so now we've sort of shifted to a more macro uh, level than okay. micro uh, for that and so you know the main thing we're doing right now is actually conducting a housing stock survey uh, and so we partnered with the Illinois Housing Development Authority, uh, which is uh, a 18-month partnership with IDA, where essentially they're providing us with the tools for a community-wide needs assessment survey and then also a GIS walking survey where literally we are going to survey every single home in Mattoon for you know exterior condition things like that so that we'd be in a better place to know where some of the issues are in our community but also uh, to have data for grant applications things like that okay. what's the timeline like for that like how long would that type of survey take so we're hoping to be done by november uh and there's again it's kind of two separate segments there so the uh the first one 
uh, is essentially just a survey that we're sending out to the community. Uh, you can look it up on the uh, city's website. Uh, we also have QR codes that we can put around for uh, as well. And essentially, uh, we're trying to get that done in a couple of months. Right now we're at 313 responses. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see 500 to 1,000 before we know that that's statistically significant, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but then the walking survey, that's probably November, December mm -hmm. finishing up, but we're hoping before that, so it's not as cold for yeah. our volunteers. There was rumors a few months back, I talked to somebody on the uh, city council, that there was an apartment complex on the east side that was scheduled to maybe start, or they were looking into it. Is that still out there? Do you know? It's still out there. I, I think that uh, if it's the one that I'm, I'm that assuming, you're yeah. referring to, yeah, I, I We've been talking to them about just specific types of development incentives, things like that. They'd like to see what we could do to, you know, maybe make it a little more feasible because housing's hard, right? Yeah. You know, in terms of making the numbers work. And so, you know, that's really one of the other multifaceted approaches that we're trying to take, uh, both as m my department and then also as Matt Tune in Motion as a whole, is just what types of incentives should the city be offering? Is it you know, waive building permit fees? Is it, uh, you know, property tax abatement, things like that? Uh, because right now, if we have land where it's a dilapidated building that's already not really contributing to those tax rolls, uh, you know, I feel that we'd be able to save significantly uh, just because, you know, it's money that's already not being paid. So if we defer that for five years to get a house on the tax rolls after five years, yeah. it's definitely worth it. People always say, like, oh, we should just tear down the houses that are dilapidated and, or nobody living there or, and, and so somebody can build new. But it's really easier said than done because somebody owns that property and they have to agree to it. They may be out of town. So take us through the process of when yeah. people just throw that thing, kind of statement out. Yeah, so I mean, that, that's what we're actively trying to do right now, but it's very hard for non-home rule municipalities to do that quickly. So, you know, let's say you're going down the street, you see a property that's abandoned, uh, there's holes in the roof, things like that. There's a really good chance that the city already has a repair demolish order on that building and that we're in court with those folks. Uh, but as a non-home rule municipality, it takes us about three years because of that process. Um, because of the legal process to acquire those problem properties. However, if uh, we had access to a piece of home rule authority uh, through something like a land bank, which is what we're actively pursuing, and I can get into that yeah. too, uh, but it significantly shortens that process and allows us to intervene in about eight months. So, you know, a house that has an opening in the roof you know, you could save that within eight months, potentially, whereas if it has an opening in the roof for three years, you're not rehabbing that. Yeah, that's three winners, yeah. <laughs> Corbin? Uh, I've got nothing right now. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. Um, I want to talk a little bit to uh, Carolyn about when you when you have to do, do the, you're, you wear two hats on this. You're involved with the Chamber of Commerce but you, with Matsuda in Motion. So when someone comes to the Chamber and talks about housing, what exactly do you tell them so they can maybe feel a little bit better about maybe moving uh, to the area? Well, we do tell them about the housing committee and that we're very active and trying to get things moving. We've, we actually had, um, you know, I won't say the employer, but an employer, they have a lot of problem with new people they're trying to bring here to work for them, finding housing, but they had to, they had one, um, it was going to be, I believe, uh, well, it was a, somebody that they really wanted to employ, and they changed their mind and decided not to work here because they were having trouble finding a house. So, I mean, it is something that's going on across the U.S. It's not just happening here in Mattoon, but we do tell them what's going on, and what we also do is we do get them in touch with uh, landlords and, and um, real estate agents to talk to them because, you know, there's something out there probably it might not be what they want to end up in but until other until some of these new housing options open up i think i was talking to a realtor friend i somebody here was buying or selling a house and at one point like within the last six minutes there was only like six months not minutes six months <laughs> there was only like five or six houses under a hundred thousand even for sale in this yep. entire and county it, and that continues that problem continues so because yeah. i've heard people say there's there's very inexpensive houses available and really expensive houses available but nothing in the middle yeah mm -hmm. that's still the safe 
say, uh, still the same problem? Yeah, I, I'd say currently, yeah, but you know, moving forward, that's what we're trying to yeah. attract here. And so, you know, by being a little more proactive, and we, we're working on two separate potential subdivision developments, which is really exciting. Yeah. Uh, and you know, trying to figure out where is that sweet spot? Is it a hundred and up, or is it something a little bit lower than that? Uh, but I, I'd say, you know, for what is available. It, it's not necessarily a negative thing for me. It, it's very positive. Like it had, a, I'm originally from Sarasota, Florida, and I just purchased a home here recently. And you know, to get something of similar specs, things like that, I'd pay probably three hundred thousand dollars, something like that, in Florida. Here, significantly less. I mean, you know, and and so it really makes home ownership, uh, you know, more possible in rural communities uh, for you know, younger folks like myself. Uh, and there, because of our area, there's actually a lot of programs that folks don't know about. And so we're trying to also educate around that too, like the USDA 501 and 502 programs. You can purchase a house right here in Coles County, zero down, 4% interest, uh, depending upon income qualifications. And you'd be surprised to know like what they are. I think the cutoff for that is like $62,000 or something annual income uh, for a single person. Uh, so, it, you know, it, it, there's really just a lot of positivity around that. It's just getting that information out there to the right people. Okay. Um, you said something at the beginning of that statement that, that, that stuck with me. You're working on two subdivisions. Yep. Uh, you got you can't just lay, throw that out there without <laughs> me asking, like, you know, where and, and uh, can you yeah. say where? Yeah. And, yeah. So, yeah, so one of them one I can't, of, yeah. uh, but the other <laughs> one is city-owned property. It's 30-something-odd uh, acres on Old State Road. And so the idea is... Uh, we're trying to develop it in a way that, you know, is cost effective, uh, but at the same time provides quality housing, right? Because, you know, for example, as a new homeowner, I've learned what asbestos tile is and <laughs> things like that. And, you know, you definitely don't want that when you're trying to attract folks to a community. And so with this, we're actually talking about modular housing, not, uh, you know, typically like a trailer or something like that. This is prefabricated and, you know, really high quality stuff. There's actually, uh, you know, specific brands that we're looking at to have in that area. Uh, and I mean, if you look at like what part of Old State Road, are you? Are, oh are man, <laughs> um, it's, it's near where yeah. Brookstone is. Okay, you know, yeah. Right, yeah, in that area. Yeah, and the idea is essentially, you know, they're sturdier than stick belt homes, you know, two by six construction, things like that. Uh, and they're also, you know, more uniform in the sense of, you know, you're going to have consistent quality every time. Whereas with stick belt, you know, sometimes things can happen during a project. Um, so, is some of the development uh, obstacles the fact that we're kind of landlocked with farms and they don't want to sell or they can't sell or the, the or is in the, for the city limits because most of the stuff has to be inside the city limits correct uh, yes and no okay. i mean well so, explain that explain that if you could. yeah so i mean there are plenty of homes that are outside of the city limits i mean you'd be surprised to see the number of you know places that have mattoon addresses but actually are not within mattoon proper on the you okay. know, district map for that um but for this one it is within the city limits and um, yeah, I, it's really more so just how do we do that for the entire area? Because as we do that, more folks will come here. It's good for Mattoon. It's good for Charleston and everywhere else. Okay, good. There can be a lot of like stigma around that type of cost-effective housing. Have you guys encountered that throughout this process? And like, if so, how have you dealt with it? Yeah, so I'll actually, I got a whole thing on this oh, piece of paper yeah. for <laughs> That's a good question. And so, because well, I, I think yeah. too, when we first, when it was first mentioned in our meeting, I think everybody kind of went, "Ooh, right," you know. But I was quite impressed, so he'll be impressed. Yeah, and, and so like with some of these processes, like specifically with Ida's community revitalization programming, um, you know, it is going to enable more affordable housing to come to our community, but. I want to specifically state that, you know, it's not low income, uh, it's affordable housing. And that's for everybody, regardless of what type of, you know, income you have. So like a good example of this is like the average per capita income in Mattoon, so just one person, it's about $25,392 annually, which is about $2,116 a month, right? And so affordable housing for that person is 30% of their income. Uh, and so you're looking at $634 on average 
uh, monthly. Uh, whereas a family that has an income of about 100,000 annually, things like that, affordable housing for them is you know nearly $2,500 a month. So you know essentially, we just need to make sure that it fits within that 30% range for you know all of our residents and folks that are interested in coming to the community. But yeah, getting around some of that stigma. Uh, you know, is definitely a, a challenge. Uh, but, you know, I'm confident that as we continue to engage the public like this, uh, you know, we'll be able to get that information out there to folks. There's also something about rehabilitation grants for people's homes or condos or whatever. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so uh, basically we are working on a grant program uh, utilizing uh, some locally sourced funding, uh, not from tax, just donations, uh, and then also from uh, you know, state grants to essentially establish some type of uh, rehabilitation program for homes. So we're thinking somewhere around the $10,000 range per homeowner has to be an owner occupant. Uh, and again, we're not launching this program yet. We've only secured 50% of the funding, but the idea is to make that available for about 50 homes or so. Uh, and so it would be any right of way improvements. So it could be, you know, porches, roofs, siding, uh, siding things like that, paint, windows. Uh, and, you know, it's essentially a copy and paste of a really successful program out of Macomb. Uh, I was talking with. Uh, so you stole it, basically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I literally had a phone call with John Bannon, uh, their uh, economic development person That's there. That's awesome. Uh, and I was like, hey, can I steal this? He's like, yeah. I get it. <laughs> be nice. This is our story on WEIU. We stole it from Penn State. No, 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 we talked to him, too. So we get it. Uh, Kelly, you also I mentioned, and I wrote it down. I'm going I'm to not have the details on this, but you also just were awarded another grant for something. And, and you recently, can you talk about that? Or is that, or should that be Alex? That would be Alex. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. As I catch him in a drink of water. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, could you say that again? There was a grant that you said you just recently were awarded, and I, I wrote down a grant because when you walked in, I didn't get into details, but I just don't know if you want to talk about that as well. Oh, gotcha. Related to, uh, oh, the AmeriCorps one. Yeah, that's gotcha. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah, a little oh, separate yeah. from housing, but, uh, yeah, essentially uh, we have received a federally uh, funded grant uh, from AmeriCorps to have seven AmeriCorps National yeah. Civilian Conservation Corps members come out here to our community and build trails out at Lake Paradise. Uh, you know, it, it's really just a testament to national service, bringing folks together, the importance of it. I've served five terms in AmeriCorps. I can't tell you enough how much it's impacted my life and, and you know, the impact that they're going to have in this community as well. I um, used to live out there, so my, I, 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 my question would be, like, where were the trails that would it be? Got gotcha. all the sides, or can you explain a little uh, bit? So just the east and west side. So the city has about 110 acres of city-owned property out there. And so uh, there's a cemetery area out there, yeah. right? Uh, and so the city has some property there, which we've already kind of cut a basic loop. I wouldn't recommend anybody goes on it yet because <laughs> it's not ready. Uh, but uh, they'll be out there from this Friday until November 7th, just creating high-quality trail systems for our residents there. And it's really part of a broader initiative where uh, in our bike plan where the idea is over the next 10 20 years something like that we connect the Lincoln Prairie grass trail straight down to Lake Mattoon through Lake Paradise uh, and so you know to provide some incentive for that for grant applications and things you know you need to have quality amenities there to you know help with those types of linkages and uh, so this is a piece of that this is a piece of you know the city of Mattoon beginning to reinvest in that area uh, and really you know just start uh, using quality of life as an economic development strategy. I think it's funny because you know nobody really thought about this 15, 20 years ago, and now Mattoon and Charleston have really become something where it can be that biking, hiking, and, and uh, destination place. And because if you've noticed around Central Illinois, you said you're at Broom Corps this weekend, yeah. Carolyn. Is everybody has their own niche? I think uh -huh. maybe that that's the niche that. Mattoon and Charleston yeah, seem to be Yeah, it's exciting, too. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, and, and, I mean, you'd be surprised to know that, you know, Illinois ranks 46 in the nation for access to public land. That's uh, not so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so anything we can do to kind of move that needle and, you know, get more people outside and engaged in the environment, uh, I think is a win for residents. All right, we're, about, uh, we're talking today with Alex Minishik and Carolyn Cloyd from Mattoon in Motion. You sent me a ton of things, and I want to make sure I get through some of these. Um, but everybody really, you really want them to take this needs assessment, correct? Yes. So um, I, is it, 
what's the? I know you went through a couple of them, but is there going to be something they can go on? Everybody loves to be online now, where they can go online, answer questions, and hit it to you. Is that available? Oh yeah, it's just it's yeah. an online survey. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'll probably have Matt Tune in Motion posted on their Facebook page right after this, and then have the city do it as well. Uh, it's also up on the city's website uh, under the public notices. You might have to scroll down a couple yeah. of them, but yeah. So in every, like five, 10, 15 questions, five or ten minutes. Uh, or yeah, what? yeah, it probably it takes seven minutes. I think is seven? about, and yeah. it's anonymous. So yeah, completely. People, anonymous. you know, some people don't like to take surveys, but it's anonymous, and it will help tremendously. Yeah. Um, not to like detract the conversation a bit, but going back to the housing thing when we were talking about your plan from Macomb, um, mm -hmm. you were talking about donations. You said you're about halfway there. What would you need to reach your donation goal? Uh, so. Uh, essentially, that was just locally uh, funded for that, but the entire program is set up to be about $500,000. We've raised half of that through commitments, uh, but then outside of that, uh, there's a, actually a 10% match within that, so the folks that would be applying for these actually have a little bit of skin in the game, too. Okay. So of that uh, $10,000, they provide 1000 towards that grant. Uh, and, uh, you know, if that's something that somebody wasn't able to afford in that moment, we'd actually most likely run it through the city's revolving loan fund so that and then provide kind of a letter of, you know, just ensuring uh, to the contractor that it would be paid. Yeah. Do you sit down and have meetings individually with developers, contractors, construction people, or do you try to do it collectively or how does that work? Sort of both. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. yeah. Yeah. Can you take us through that meeting, like, so the I can kind of get a sense of what the person on the other side of the table is getting, so they understand that there is that need to kind of do what they need to do. Well, I think first of all, there's an eclectic group of people. I think on the <laughs> housing committee, and we keep getting more. We just got a new member uh, the other day that she brings a whole lot to the table. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's real estate people, there's city people, there's. Um, I mean, preachers, there's me, uh, just uh, people that can give that input. And then generally, if somebody's going out, I think, to speak, Alex might be able to speak about this better, but like, if we decide that we need to talk to contractors about something, you'll get a smaller group that will sort of go out and talk to them okay. and bring that back to the committee. Yeah. I, I, you know, this is more of an inside joke. It's like herding cats to me <laughs> when you have 100 people that are involved, though, in the Mattoon in Motion. And, they have the, the, in the, and I want to ask you off mic, uh, you know, how do you get them together? And you said, you do. can you take us through the process yeah. of the town hall and things like that? Yeah, so every five years we kind of do something called a mapping, uh, which I, I can't spell out the whole acronym. <laughs> I should have wrote Google's it down. That's what Google's for. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's run through the Illinois Institute of Rural Affairs out of uh, Western Illinois University. Yeah. Uh, fantastic fantastic group of folks and so they come to our community for three days straight and essentially uh, you know talk about where are we now where do we want to be and how do we get there and so every five years we get a new five-year strategic vision from them uh, that enables us to you know focus on six different aspects of our community uh, you can see it in action through the work that we do and also what's happening in Charleston with Charleston can right now yeah. they just did it for the first time and they're doing a fantastic job so you can really see that all over Coles County a couple of questions for Carolyn uh, the the Chamber Expo is coming up. Can you it, tell us about it that? Is on October fifth, and um, it's it's we've already got a lot of vendors signed up. And Taste of the Expo, everybody loves Taste of the Expo. Get all these different tastes of different restaurants. So we're excited about it. <laughs> Corbin, anything for her on that? Um, where is that at? Is that at the it's mall at in Cross Manchester? County yeah. Mall? And it's it's probably one of the biggest expos in. So I was going to say, Illinois. I think I've been there without realizing yeah. it, actually. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> if you go out there and there's a bunch of vendors in the middle of the mall. Yeah, yeah. You're there. Yeah. there you go. Yeah. Um, when you, uh, Carolyn, you seem to be involved in like everything in, in the community. <laughs> How do you kind of keep everything in line with your Matthew and Emotion Chamber and all the other events that you kind of support? Um, I. I I don't know, really. <laughs> I guess I just uh, I was keep, plug a great answer. I I keep don't know. plugging away, and you know, a lot of them are just interconnected, if you will. Yeah. You know, working at the chamber, it sort of fits in with the Matt Tune in Motion thing, so it's it all just kind of runs together and smooths together. And Alex, what would be you day to day? I mean, you know, can you take us through maybe a day? Uh, yeah, so essentially, really depends what day it is because there's specific yeah. ones for council meetings, things like that. But typically, uh, you know, could be 
zoning questions that pop up, things like that. Can I build a house here? Typically the answer is yes, uh, and things like that. Uh, but then I'd say, you know, then it's meetings with community members, you know, really trying to get input from folks about, you know, what they want to see in their community. Uh, and then with Matt Tune in Motion, it's scheduling everybody's time, having the meetings consistently, and uh, most importantly, following up, uh, because that's how these nonprofit organizations just, you know, stay alive. We Absolutely. have not yet talked about workforce development, another need in our community. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Yeah, uh, so we've actually uh, recently spoke with uh, Coles Together, uh, and they, they have some pretty interesting ideas about how to partner with the Move to Mattoon program. And so, you know, one of the potential things that we had thought of in the inception of that group is, you know, maybe this just isn't only for remote workers. Maybe this is something where, you know, we can kind of have a a funnel from our partnership with Make My Move and other organizations that have gotten us a lot of media attention to really showcase, you know, the incentives that are already available in our community uh, that, you know, maybe aren't as advertised broadly. You know, there's a lot of places in town that have sign-on bonuses, things like that, that I think quite and some a few incredible folks, ones from what yeah. I hear lately. And oh, yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, and so really just trying to get that information out there as well. Uh, and so that that's really... Uh, one of the big ones that's coming up is that we want to facilitate that conversation a little more uh, and then hopefully develop something out of that. Well, we've got a couple minutes left here. The sports complex, you want to talk about that a little bit? Oh, yeah, fantastic. Uh, everything is going ahead full speed. Uh, I believe we're finalizing some TIF things right now, which should be by the end of this month. Uh, so, you know, a lot of neat developments associated with that, uh, most of which I can't talk about. <laughs> uh, but just be prepared for something special. Absolutely. He can't leave, though, until he gives us a couple <laughs> of times. Yeah. So there you go. A um, minute and a half left. Anything I forgot? Or do you want to do I can ask you silly questions. So it's your call. Uh, you had so much going on. I mean, with that. Just, we just want to push if people would take that housing survey. It is so very important. I, I think it's very easy for people to see a survey and they're like, uh, uh. But this is so important to what we're trying to get done. And, and honestly, if you are interested in housing in Coles County and you want to come on out, it is the first Thursday of every month, 10 a.m. at City Hall, the Matt Tune in Motion Housing Action Team meetings. Uh, we need volunteers to do our walking survey, which is separate from that one, mm -hmm. uh, where we're literally going to 9,000 parcels. Okay. And, and yeah. while you're saying that, just I guess let this be a notice to people in Matt Tune. If you see somebody outside your house <laughs> looking at your house and taking a photo, that will be us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the ring doorbell will yeah. alert us off. So. All right, I'll ask you a few questions then. All right. Um, what country would you like to visit? We'll go left or right. Uh, Ireland. I would love to go back to Macedonia. Oh, uh, Austria. Yeah. Austria. Okay, All right. So popular Austria. movie you've never seen that you hear people talking about? Star Wars. Never. Star Wars? I've never what? seen it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, Jeez. Fight Club. Uh, the second Godfather. Most famous person you've ever met? I think I asked you this before, right? Or um, not? No, he, you asked me a different question, but right. um, I'm never good at this, though. All Go right. to Alex, and I'll come back. Uh, oh. we got 10 seconds. So Jerry Alex. Springer. Jerry Springer. Eh? I haven't met it. you. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll go. A man named Sterling Mace. He was a veteran, so he might not be famous to you guys, but he was His to team. me. That's good. Well, thanks for coming in.